warm welcome to Europe PCR 2025, the roundtable discussion. Uh, my name is Ralf Stefan von Bartleben from Germany and Canada. And it's my great pleasure to be here with Mariana Adamo from Italy. And we're here to discuss the latest evidence in tricuspic valve repair. And we have seen this week's uh, presentations of the now two-year data of two important studies, the Triluminate randomized pivotal trial and the BVITE trial. Can you give us some insights in the new data that has evolved in these two trials, Mariana? Yeah, thanks, Stefan. So the triluminate pivotal showed a, a great reduction in tricuspid regurgitation, a sustained reduction at two-year follow-up. So 24% of patients had uh, two plus or less tricuspid regurgitation at this time point and also there is a sustained improvement in quality of life assessed by KCCQ with 15 points change even at, at uh, two years follow-up. This is a, a great result but the most important result is the reduction in heart failure hospitalization by 28% at two years. This is an important result and if we look into details at the comparison between uh, the control group uh, in the, in the, among the control group where there is a high rate of crossover, if we compare the patients who crossed over as compared to those who did not, there is a, 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 an important result because these patients have similar baseline characteristics but patients who crossed over were sicker and there is an increase, a huge increase in heart failure hospitalization after one one year up to the crossover and then a great reduction up to two years. This is a, a, a very important result and these results are confirmed by the b right registry which is a single arm uh, including a single arm study including more than 500 uh, patients undergoing TIR with triclip. Here we have a, a significant again reduction in TR at two years sustained an improvement in quality of life and a reduction in heart failure hospitalization. It's important to point out that most of these patients had available data to follow up at two years and the significant reduction in heart failure hospitalization as compared to the, peri the period previous to implantation is really significant. So Stefan, you are a great experience in this field and uh, uh, um, considering the results of these studies, can you go a bit more into details and uh, can you provide us some insight regarding which patient is the best candidate for this treatment? I think it's very important to see that we have a strong correlation of TR reduction to outcome. It is interesting to see that we don't only gain in the pivotal randomized trial information about the treatment, but also of the natural progression of the disease. So if we look at the heart failure hospitalization in those patients who crossed over and see their natural fate within one year, we see that there is a progression in this group of heart failure hospitalization and actually it's the highest number of events that we see in the control group. After the treatment, we see a reduction also in those patients who crossed over late. But we see that this reduction is, of course, just one third. While those patients who were initially treated actually experienced at two years time, surviving and having a good result, experienced reductions of up to 75%. This gives us the information also with the real-world data of the b right, and together we have an amount of patients of 1,160, so this is a huge tricuspid data group and data cohort. We can see that there is a correlation with the effectiveness of the trial, and we know that we are able to treat more than 80% of the patients to be reduced from massive and torrential TR down to moderate, mild, or non. And this is clearly relevant uh, for those patients and also for real-world treatment because outcome is correlated and we now know that it's not only quality of life anymore, it's heart failure hospitalization which gives us a more objective marker for our treatment efforts. How is this, Mariana, seen in the heart failure community as an outcome relevant endpoint? And is there a different perception now of tricuspid treatment with repair? Yes, I think that this is a very good starting point for the heart failure community, for engaging a heart failure community, because as you have said, uh, this is the first time we have an improvement in a hard hand point like heart failure hospitalization with this kind of device. So this is a really 
important result. So I would like to wrap up, Mariana. We have seen that uh, after two years, we have more endpoints that are positive for device treatment than for the control group. Like in COAPT, we have also seen now in tricuspid valve intervention that there is a time span, a time interval to have all effects taking positive results and influencing the clinical outcome of our patients. So we have to wait for the positive results. It starts with quality of life and it uh, goes beyond that with heart failure hospitalizations, which are driving a harder endpoint now in our patient population. And we should sum up that these two year results are confirmed by a large and even more sick real world registry, which is the b write data, which is of course single arm, but which enhances our knowledge from 600 to 1,100 patients. So I think it's one of the biggest, both randomized and non-randomized groups that have a distinct follow-up with a follow-up rate of 95%. So I think we have more reliable data now to help our patients. With this, I would like to close this very nice roundtable at EuroPCR 2025.